Welcome to Crazy Fishbone and today's webinar that is called Beyond Ideas, Managing Innovation to Realize Value. Uh, today's speaker is uh, Magnus Carlson and I, my name is Joachim Ekblad. Uh, the duration of this webinar is approximately 50 minutes and after that it's possible for you to ask questions. And to do so, you write your questions in the webinar tools question uh, part and we will answer all your questions uh, uh, by, by voice. Uh, and the presentation that Magnus is showing uh, will also be sent to you uh, after the webinar. Uh, so once again, a warm welcome and uh, Magnus, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Joachim. It's uh, great to be with you here this morning and talk about managing innovation to realize value under the title of Beyond Ideas. My name is Magnus Carlson. I have been working with innovation management uh, in one way or another for the past uh, 20 years. Uh, I've been doing that in uh, research uh, in consulting, in standardization, and I've also been working as the director of uh, new business development and innovation at Ericsson for, for a number of years. Now, this morning we're going to um, go through uh, an agenda with a, with a couple of topics. Uh, I'd like to start with talking a little bit about the innovation challenges that organizations are face, facing at this point. Um, uh, I need to touch a little bit upon what is innovation, how do we define it, what is it that we're actually talking about. We'll move on to talk about the six success factors. That will be the main part of the presentation. Talk about what do you need to think about in your organization to manage innovation effectively. Then we conclude and then we will have a couple of questions at the end. So let's, uh, let's get started. Innovation challenges um, are uh, re really at the core of the urgency that is uh, uh, driving the, 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 the need to manage uh, innovation. Innovation is important for all types of organization. We are here, um, uh, we're actually relevant for public organization, private organization, not-for-profit organizations, and so on. Innovation has been important and will always be important for these organizations. Um, there are a couple of things happening right now that, uh, uh, that accentuate this important, that, that really makes an urgency to innovate. And just a few examples here that you may be already familiar with uh, is a digitalization. It's happening everywhere, it's affecting all, every organization. Uh, and at the bottom of that, it really means that we need to learn to be better at innovating uh, our offerings and how we work, how we move to market, how we interact with uh, our users and customers. The second thing here is around the circular economy to create uh, sustainable organizations, create offerings that are sustainable um, uh, over time and also related to, uh, to, to the environment. And all of that boils down to that we need to take a closer look and deep a deep, I think deeper about new business models. And we see new business models emerging all around us. Um, uh, most of them are based on, on digital technologies, but, but business models could also be uh, any type of new way to reach out to our users and our customers. And on top of this, we see that things are moving faster and faster. New services are instantly global in the world today. This is just an example of how many years it took to a new service to reach 50 million users. We see here that radio took 38 years, television 13 years, the internet, Facebook and iPod took three to four years, and, uh, and finally uh, Angry Birds took uh, 35, uh, 35 days. As you can see, um, uh, it's, it's now possible to reach millions of users globally using new technology uh, and, and, and so on. The flip side of this is that it, it's also easy to lose customers, to, 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 to lose the users as fast as you, as you gain them. 
So together, new business model, the speed of change, uh, creates an, uh, a need to innovate. And this is a study that came out uh, a few years ago, but it's just an example of studies that are coming um, every year, actually, that shows that global executives say that innovation is extremely important to their, uh, to their organization. We see this over and over again. Um, uh, typically, innovation is sometimes uh, you know, top, top one, top two, top three on, on the list that companies and organizations must focus on. At the same time, in this study, we see that uh, it's not going very well. This is the bad news. Here, over 90% are dissatisfied with the way their innovation performance is, is developing. So there is a huge gap here. Innovation is extremely important, but we do not know how to do it uh, and how to get that, that level of, of innovation uh, that we would like to have. And we see that in a number of, of companies that actually go, go bankrupt. So the lifespan of companies are shortening, and we see here the likes of Kodak, Lucent, Nortel, in Sweden, we have the case of Fawcett uh, and also others that has got disrupted because they did not get innovation right in their organizations. So in essence, organizations are confused about innovation. What is it really? What is innovation and what can it do for me and my organization? That is a key question that is puzzling many organizations today. And second, can or should it be formally managed? Um, what, I mean, uh, some, some, some uh, companies say that uh, innovation cannot be managed. Let's just wait and see with, if the good ideas pops up and then we'll take it from there. Uh, well, today we know better, but to sum this up, uh, in is one of the most notoriously difficult management activities. Uh, organizations need to deal with a lot of things, but innovation is actually the hardest one. Organizations are not typically built to innovate, they are built to deliver. And that's why we need to put specific attention to how are we working with innovation in an effective and systematic way. Let's take a look at, uh, at how this is playing out uh, over time. This is the... Um, um, the, the Gartner hype cycle, and I just let me just explain how it works if you haven't seen it before. Um, all phenomena start with some kind of trigger, uh, and then they, they uh, if they're successful, they very quickly reach a point where the hype is very high and the expectations are very high. Think of a technology um, uh, like uh, software as a service or, or a social media technology or something like that. It reaches the point where the hype is very high. Typically, you then enter a stage where there's great disappointment. It didn't work quite as you thought it would, or it would take longer to, to make the technology effective and so on. And then, after that disappointment, if you're lucky, you start the, the, um, the, the, the cumbersome walk through enlightenment when you learn how to use it, and all the way to productivity when you actually uh, put it into place in your in your organization. So if we apply this to innovation management, and this is what Gartner did just uh, uh, a little while ago, we can look at we, we can see here that the trigger is really the urgency that I just talked about. We must innovate to survive, and then companies are are, are trying things like idea competition, brainstorming sessions. Shark tanks, they put up slogans to drive their culture, and so on. But very often, this ends with weak results, and it's not sustainable over time. So what we see now is that we're entering the stage where we can learn from research and from experience, where we're moving slowly up this productivity curve. And then, as you can see in front of us, we have here a a state where we hope that all innovation activities are embedded in business and, and management practices. And this goes also for organizations that are not, not, not businesses, that we have integrated an ability to innovate into the culture of the organization uh, itself. 
Now, you might want to think of your own organization. Where are you on this scale? There is a time timeline down below. Um, uh, but uh, I, I don't think that this is uh, this goes for every organization. So, so you, you can think about where are you on this uh, on this maturity curve, if you will, and uh, where do you need to go next? Typically, if you look at the hype here, the, there is there is a great focus on ideas. We need to collect ideas, generate ideas, uh, and so on. To move up this maturity curve, we need to uh, uh, extend that uh, that scope. We need to do a shift and go beyond managing ideas. So the first one is to go from looking at the ideas to look at the full process. Before you generate ideas, there are things you need to do before and after there are a lot of things you need to put in place in order for innovation to happen. So you need to move from ideas to the full process. The second shift is to go from just looking at the process, the innovation process if you will, to a full system. To get that process to work, you need other things. You need strategy, culture, money, time, and so on. Um, and, and, and we call that the full system. You need to think of innovation activities as a system to really get it to work. Now, the final shift that you need to take is to stop thinking of innovation activities is isolated in your organization. Typically, they become an activity that you do maybe once a year or now and then or outside the regular business and so on. You need also to think about how do you integrate that innovation management system into other systems in your organizations, both organizationally and, and technically. We're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, in a moment. Uh, so that is some of the challenges that you need to look at in order to drive innovation effectively in your organization. Now, one thing I mentioned was the confusion about what is innovation really. Uh, let me just spend a little bit of time to talk about how, uh, what, what, innovation, what innovation is. And there are a number of definitions out there. And I'm sure you have your favorite definition yourself. Um, here is one that I, <clears throat> I particularly like. This is innovation is staying relevant. And um, that is really the essence. To stay relevant, you need to, um, to work with innovation, to continuously innovate in your organization. And you need to create the conditions for that to happen. But to be honest, this is not the real definition that we can use, is we can be inspired by this, but in order to create a definition to, to, to really talk about what it is, I'd like to propose this one. And this is the definition we're talking about when we are uh, when we are meeting internationally to create a common language for innovation management. And, and it goes like this. Um, innovation is a new or changed product, service, process, model, method, or basically anything that is realizing or redistributing value. So uh, a, a couple of things here. Let's think, let's think about innovation in a very, very broad sense. It's anything that is new or changed that is creating value, basically. So those are the two uh, characteristics of an innovation. And then also important in the center here, uh, anything can basically be innovated. So think very broadly in terms of what is it that we need to do in terms of innovation in our organization. So I suggest to use this definition as, as the basis for the conversation going forward. Now, that, that kind of broad definition uh, allows us to think about <clears throat> innovation um, uh, along a, a full spectrum. Uh, it includes incremental innovation, where you innovate in small steps, all the way up to radical or disruptive innovation that can really transform your company or your industry. Uh, it ranges from what we call sustaining innovation to growth innovation. Sustaining innovation is the kind of innovation you need to do in your organization to uh, just, just keep your position, to keep your customers. And in some businesses, as, uh, as you know, this, is, uh, this could be very costly, very difficult. Just to keep up with the pace of new technology to maintain the customers that you have. 
Growth innovation means that you are moving into new areas. You, 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 uh, uh, you start to address new customers and so on. There's another range here from cost saving innovation to revenue generating innovation. Um, some part in some, some, um, uh, some, some time in an organization, um, you need to decide uh, what kind of innovation uh, should you focus on? Should you focus on driving costs down or to create new revenues? Both are relevant and both should be included when you think strategically about innovation in your organization. Finally, should you innovate internally with the employees, the people you have? Uh, or should you reach out and uh, innovate together with others, experts, um, startups, uh, what have you, that is outside of your organization? So um, uh, I'm bringing this up to, to stimulate you to think about innovation very, very broadly. And um, one, more, one more thing regarding what innovation is and how you can define it. This is a, this is a study from a number of companies asking the question, uh, what, in what types of innovations are you investing in? And as you can see here, there are several types of, of innovations down below. In the center, you have product performance in the product system. And as you move to the right, you have other types of innovations focusing on the brand, how you reach the customer, how you interact and engage with the customer. To the left-hand side is how you're delivering the value to the customer, your business model, your partners, and so on. And as you can see from this study, companies are investing in the product, the features of the product, what, what they are selling, and less in the other types of innovations. Let's, let's take a look at the other, other picture here. Where, where, is, where do they get the most leverage? Where is the return? And as you can see, the least return is around new features of the product and the product system. And, and the big return comes from looking at your business model, the ecosystem you're working in, and around customer engagement. Now, this doesn't mean that you should stop innovating uh, uh, around your, or, uh, your offering, uh, but it does say that you should look broadly. Maybe you should invest in innovation in other areas just focusing on the product or the service that you are, are, are providing. So the message here is look very broadly when uh, working with innovation in your organization. I will now turn to the six success factors for driving innovation in an organization. And um, these six comes from, from research, from experience, and from international standardization that we are in a process that we are in, in right now. So successful innovators, organizations that are, that are really good at innovating, they do these six things. They have a strategic direction, they have adaptable processes, they have a, a way to evaluate performance, they have people engagement, open collaboration, the last one is integrated systems. So let me just take you around this, this, uh, uh, this circle and talk about each of them a little bit more. Now, first, strategic direction. Companies that are really good innovators, uh, they have a good understanding of the context, what is happening around them and what are their own capabilities so that they can set clear goals clear objectives and strategies for innovation in their organization. And they also allocate the necessary resources to, to uh, implement or to deploy those strategies. Now, an innovation strategy uh, is really about uh, describing where you're going to innovate and how is that innovation going to create value for your customers or your users. It's all about how that is going to happen. What are your ways of working? What is the approach that you need in order to address that value for customers and users? And finally, the role of the innovation strategy is to inform and inspire the people in your organization so that they can put their effort in the right direction and help you innovate in the direction where you want to go. Just one example here, a couple of years ago, Electrolux and the, the, uh, the then CEO Hans Drobe, 
He said the following, challenged by the competition, Electrolux should develop its offerings based on a profound understanding of, of uh, the customer's needs instead of taking off from our technical skills and capabilities. Now, this is just the kind of the, the, the headline of the innovation strategy, obviously, but already here we can see that there is a clear fo focus. Um, the innovation strategy should not look at technical features first, but start working with understanding what are users and consumers doing with, with uh, uh, these this types of products and services that they are, are providing. So that, that provides a, a guidance directing the energy in a certain, certain direction. And there is more detail around this case. But um, finally, I'd like to bring up here in the section of strategy uh, a study of a lot of companies that, would, that was done globally. Uh, and this is actually the, the, the thousand companies in the world that spend the most on, on R&D, research and development. And this study shows that there is no correlation, there is no relationship between R&D spending and the business performance <clears throat> of these companies. Now that is, that is kind of a peculiar uh, uh, result. So the more you spend on R&D, it doesn't automatically mean that you have a better business performance. Um, now, the second question in this study, okay, if, 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 if that is not enough to explain business performance, what is? What is really making a difference? And the study came up with two, two answers to that question. You need to have an aligned innovation strategy, an innovation strategy that really helps the organization or the company to move uh, in the direction where they want to go overall. The second one is a culture that is supporting or fostering innovation activities. So strategy and culture are the key differentiators that you need to do apart, apart from investing in R&D if, if you are that kind of, kind of company. So we're going to, to talk about culture a little bit later, but the, your innovation strategy is really key here. <clears throat> Moving on to the second success factors, adaptable processes. Organizations that are really good at innovating, they are adapting their processes and their structures uh, to the opportunities that they would like to address, not the other way around. Uh, many companies try to use the processes and the ways of working that they already have for mature products and services and push new opportunities into those processes. You need to take a careful look at how should I adjust the processes and structures that I have to, be max, to maximize the, uh, the, the likelihood of succeeding with the opportunities, with the innovations that I would like uh, uh, to drive? And at a, at a minimum, organizations are separating incremental improvement and radical innovation in the following way. So you have one track to, to address minor innovations, minor changes, but you need a completely separate way of working for the more radical ideas because timeframes are different, budgets are different, and you governance these processes in a, uh, in a different way. And you can have uh, uh, even, even more processes and successful companies tailor made their processes so there might be more than this uh, uh, to actually take ideas and innovations forward in the organization. If we look at some of the reasons why innovation processes fail, is because they are too rigid or too loose. Uh, instead of being adaptive, that we just talked about, they are too sequential. Uh, instead of being iterative and parallel, typically processes are, are, are too technology and idea driven. And we talked about this, the whole theme of this, this webinar is beyond ideas. Instead of starting by looking at users and the customers, and being insight driven. Final failure here is to focus too much on fact and figures instead uh, of uh, thinking of innovation as a learning activity that you do through experimentation. Typically, if you're doing something new, working with innovation, you don't have all the facts and you shouldn't ask for the facts. You have to work with an hypothesis, try it through experimentation, learn, change it, and then move on. And typically this means that 
there are a, are a couple of generic activities that, or, or building blocks to your innovation process that you need to consider. So here are, are, are five building blocks that, that uh, are typically part of any innovation process in one way or another. This one example uh, here that I would like to mention is when General Electric thought that their, the processes they had were too cumbersome and took too, too much time. They redesigned these building blocks in a much, much faster process and uh, they also named it, uh, named it FastWorks. I will not go into detail of that, but that's what they did. They took these building blocks, reorganized them, and put different emphasis on, on, on the different steps. Just very quickly, what are, these, what are these steps? You start with an intention to innovate. You have basically nothing. Then you build the knowledge about the needs. That is in the insight phase. Then you move in to generate the ideas that are the solutions to meet those needs. That's the ideation phase. You move to, move to prototyping, you experiment and you validate uh, that, that potential solution. And when you know more, you move into development. Typically, you start to invest more in this phase uh, and you start to, to, to kind of flesh out your full business model. And then the final component in this uh, toolbox is the is the deployment. You launch the, 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 the offering or or the innovation, you promote it and you support it. So there you have it, five key building blocks that you should consider to design the process to fit the opportunity that you would like to drive in your organization. Now the third success factor uh, here is performance evaluation. Companies that are really good at innovating, they are measuring the performance of their innovation portfolio and other metrics regularly in their organization. And they also visualize and communicate that to top management. So it's possible to continuously follow what is happening in our innovation activities. So they do this regularly over time. This one example here is uh, to look at the innovation portfolio in two dimensions. Um, who are the customers, our current customers and future customers? And what kind of needs are our offerings addressing uh, uh, at, at those customers? And the needs are ranging from the stated, the known needs, and, and all the way to the unstated, the needs that we do not know about. And um, a, a common model here is to create three horizons within these uh, dimensions. Uh, and that means that you, you, will, you, will, you will position your initiatives and your projects in these three dimensions, X, Y, and Z here. And, um, and uh, typically what you want is a well-balanced uh, ratio or portfolio uh, of opportunities that are representing all types of innovation uh, across these three horizons. This is decided in your innovation strategy that we talked about, um, but there is also a discussion going on, what is the optimum ratio here? Is there a golden ratio? And uh, the answer is that actually no. Uh, this depends on where you are the, in, in, in kind of your, your maturity uh, as an organization, and also it depends on what kind of business you're in. But typically, and as an example, some companies are, are, are saying the following, that we should spend 70% of our innovation uh, efforts in the core uh, targeting or improving the offerings that we have for current customers and the needs that we are, are aware of. 20% in adjacent areas and 10% in the more of the unknown and what we hear called transformational. Um, this, this ratio is set in your innovation strategy and can serve as a measure or a target when you start to filling your portfolio of innovation initiative, initiatives. Just want to bring one piece of research here uh, to you that is done by, by KTH, Royal Institute of Technologies, and some other Swedish uh, universities. This has been recently published in um, MIT. Um, uh, Sloan and Magazine. Uh, there are three lessons to take with us here. First, um, 
when you measure innovation activities, you need to take a holistic approach. You cannot just measure, uh, for example, the number of ideas and so on. You need to think about the full process, your full system, and you need several measurement points. So take a holistic approach. The second one is about what, um, what is measured is also um, uh, being done in an organization. So when you start to measure, uh, this becomes a powerful tool to communicate what is, what is happening uh, with innovation in the organization to top management. And don't underestimate the, 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 the kind of the internal politics of these measurements in your organization. Finally, the, the final lesson here is to regularly assess and improve the measurements that you have. Things are changing uh, rapidly. Uh, your strategy for innovation might change, and so, uh, so you need also to change and improve the way you measure innovation activities in your organizations. Just moving on to the fourth success factor here called people engagement. Organizations that are really good at innovating have leaders in their organization at all levels that inspire and recognize the people, the employees internally. They also encourage participation, involvement of people inside and outside of the organization in those activities. And that basically comes down to fostering a culture that are supporting innovation activities in the organization. This was one of the factors we talked about in, 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 in the study a while ago. Uh, the culture for innovation activities is extremely important in the organization to make innovation happen. And that is something also that you cannot easily put in place overnight. That is something that you have to earn over time in your organization. Luckily, innovators are everywhere, also in your organization. And here's a study that looked at a number of companies and and, and one of the results were that uh, uh, out of 200 employees, there are 10 natural innovators. But not only that, among those 200, there is one of them that are a really great innovator that could create the next big business for you and your organization. So the question to you at this, this, this point of the presentation is, um, how many innovators do you have in your organizations? Uh, do you know where they are? And um, can you make sure that you put them to the right task to do the, uh, the, uh, to take on the, the, the really tough innovation challenges that you have in your organization? Uh, you need to find a way to, um, to bring them forward so that uh, you can engage with them and put the right projects to the right, to the right person. Another piece of good news here is that uh, this research also says that 55% can learn to be better innovators. So with an, with an active approach to innovation, people in your organization can be better, better innovators and you could get better effect from innovation from your, from your initiatives uh, in your organizations. But conditions for innovation must be created. And it's very easy to destroy the conditions that you have. This is just an example of 3M that is historically been recognized as a very innovative company. At one point in time, they were driving Six Sigma efforts to the point where they said that Six Sigma almost killed our idea culture. And this became a headline in Business Week uh, a couple of years ago. So what would really happen is that efficiency uh, and uh, operational excellence and so on really took its toll on the culture of uh, innovation in, uh, in 3M. This doesn't mean that we should stop doing Six Sigma and uh, to focus on operational excellence, but it means that we have to be very proactive in create, creating the conditions for innovation to happen in our organizations. One way of doing that is to, looking, to look at uh, the people in the organization. And actually, everyone has a role uh, when it comes to drive innovation. And this, is, this is a case that I took from, from Ericsson. And you can see here in the middle, we have the innovator or the team that we just talked about. And to the left-hand side, 
we see that employees and managers and leaders in the organizations have, have clear roles. Uh, they have to be aware of how they can contribute and drive innovation in the organization. And on the right hand side, we see specific dedicated roles that you might want to consider putting in place in your organization. We see innovation coaches that are helping the innovators to take their ideas forward. And we see innovation managers that typically as a responsibility for a portfolio of initiatives uh, or an innovation uh, and funnel all the way from intent to value creation uh, in the end. So uh, that's just a few examples of how, how, how Ericsson set this up, the different roles and responsibilities for driving innovation forward. Finally, finally leadership is really important here. And uh, I don't have the time to go into details and talk about this here, but um, innovation leadership is really about being courageous, connected, networked, uh, collaborative, curious, and open-minded. So here you have the five most important leadership traits. And this comes out of a case from, from uh, uh, Procter & Gamble and a few other companies. Based on their experience, how leaders should behave in an organization uh, to uh, be able to drive innovation effectively. Now let me know, let me move to number five here, open collaboration. Organizations that are really good at driving innovation um, have been thinking about how are they going to collaborate internally as well as externally to drive innovation forward. And it's not only about collaboration, it's also about how do we, how do we uh, uh, create a competitive approach in the organization. First of all, we'll take a look at another study here that, that says that across all industries, about half of the really good opportunities and ideas comes from the employees in the organization. So we, 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 need, we need somehow to start with working with our employees. That is extremely important. Um, but uh, another quarter comes from our customers. So we need to reach out and work together with them. So collaboration is important here both across the organization internally to capture the, uh, the, the ideas from employees, uh, but also to reach out and talk to customers and other stakeholders to get their, their viewpoint, to be able to cover, cover this completely. And um, as you probably have heard of, there has been a lot of talk about open innovation re uh, recently. And, uh, and basically what that is, is uh, it's based on the notion that um, not all smart people are working for you in your organization. So to innovate effectively, you need to reach out outside of your organization. So, uh, so in short, you have ideas that are appearing and insights that are appearing inside your organization, but you also need to look outside and bring ideas in and combine that with the knowledge and the ideas you have internally to bring innovations to the market. Um, open innovation also means that some of the ideas that are surfacing inside the organization should not be developed there. They should be moved outside the organization to, uh, and, and, and be, be realized by, by uh, other mechanisms, other markets, uh, other companies. Um, just think for a moment around the, um, uh, the, the necessity of having diverse approaches or different perspectives uh, uh, when working with innovation and ideas in, in, inside a company. Um, to the left-hand side of this, this image, we see that what happens if we have a team of people uh, that have the same background, have the similar experience, and so on. We call it single discipline in this slide. And they can generate uh, a lot of ideas. And um, uh, there are good ideas, not so many failures, but also there are not so many breakthroughs. In order to increase the value of the conversation in such a team, you have to move to a more multi-discipline environment, bringing more perspectives from different departments inside your organization or from customers from the outside. Uh, and according to this piece of research, you can see that then ideas are spreading out more broadly. You have more bad ideas, 
but you also have a few really great ideas called breakthroughs here. So while the average of the value might go down, you get the, the really great ideas by having a multidisciplinary approach to, uh, to innovation. And of course, in that environment, uh, you need good support in order to filter out the good ideas from the bad ideas. And we'll come back to that when we talk about digital tools uh, in a moment. Final point here uh, is around uh, the necessity to think both in terms of collaboration and competition. Uh, humans are driven by different factors. We would like to collaborate, we would like to contribute, work together with each other, but we're also very much stimulated by competition to come up with the best idea or move the, the best opportunities forward and we would like to win over the competition. So we need to design our, the way we work with innovation in our, in, in our companies and organization to cater for both collaboration and competition. We've done a lot of research at KDH on this, and, uh, and it's actually the combination that creates the, uh, the best effect here. Well, the final success factors that I'm going to talk about today here is called integrated systems. Organizations that are really good at innovating um, they, they make sure that the, the, the organizational innovation management systems and the digital system that's going to support that are interconnected and aligned. And not only that, they also make sure that th those systems are connected to other parts of the organizations, uh, into the development processes, the quality management processes, and so on within, within the organization. Innovation cannot be driven as an isolated activity. So let's call this an organizational innovation management system. And uh, it includes, in essence, the six factors that we have uh, been talking about. And um, the, the, the way we've laid this out is that this is now fully aligned with the work that is being done at the international level where we are developing an innovation management system uh, and, and guidance for an organization to put these different success factors in place. This is called ISO 50501, and um, uh, we could talk more about that in a, in a separate session if there is an interest for that. Um, but we can already see that, that organizations like Muta La Commune, Sony Mobile, have started to implement organizational innovation management system according to this guidance standard. Well, the final step then is to put your digital innovation management system to work within this, <clears throat> within this context according to the six success factors and in accordance to the innovation management system and the, and the guidance that is, uh, that is provided. Innovation is then connected to other management systems within your organizations, the quality environment and all the systems that you might have. Many organizations today are talking about integrated management systems where they make sure that all of these management systems are working together, have a common structure and so on. Innovation should be part of that integrated management system. Now let's move to the, uh, to the conclusion. And um, first of all, we now know that uh, managing innovation in a systematic way makes a difference. Um, you should manage innovation in a way that you create the right conditions for innovation to happen in your organization according to the relevant direction that you would like to go in the future. And um, this study indicates that companies that integrate innovation into, for example, strategic planning, budget, and resource, resource allocation have a six times higher uh, uh, likelihood of achieving the targets that they have, that they have set. And we see more and more studies that are showing that there is a huge difference of doing this in a systematic way rather than leaving it to ad hoc activities uh, in your organization. Now, to, um, to round it off, I'd like to um, give you some advice on uh, what to do now. What are the steps that you can take if you would like to follow this path and capture the, uh, the lessons of 
this um, this webinar. First of all, uh, you need to think about: Are you ready to do this? What does innovation mean for you in your organization, and why is it important? The starting point uh, um, here is to articulate that because that is the essence. That is in the core of what should become your your innovation strategy. So when you've answered those uh, to those questions, you can move to step number two and start considering all these success factors. Not everyone should do everything at once, but based on step one, you know, okay, what should my strategic direction be? How should I set up the processes or the ways of working to, in order to be able to achieve what I want to achieve? How should I measure performance when I do that? How should I engage people in my organization to work towards those goals? And, and how are we going to collaborate and even compete internally and externally to make that happen? And how do I need to integrate uh, uh, the, the different systems I have in order for, for that to happen? So then you just walk through these six factors and, and, and consider what is relevant for you in order to, to take this to the next step. And the third and final step, you, uh, you should put a digital innovation management system in place. Now, why is that? Well, when you do that, you will, put the you will, you will, you will get the necessary transparency, structure, and automation in order to innovate uh, uh, effectively, to do what you need to do. A digital innovation management system will augment or improve all the six factors in terms of making them more visible, that's the transparency, creating some structure, you will see the processes that you're using to drive innovation, and you will have some automation. You will easily find innovators in your organization. You will get help in filtering out the really good ideas from the bad one, uh, and so on. So think about transparency, structure, and automation in all these six dimensions when you're going to consider your, uh, your digital innovation management system. And that's what we call uh, a way to augment innovation in your organization, to really make it something that is visible uh, uh, to everyone inside the organization. And that is what we are going to talk about at the second webinar. You are uh, you're most welcome to sign up to that. It's called Towards a Digital Innovation Management System. What requirements should be considered when implementing an effective digital innovation management system? And that will be in May. And uh, it should be possible to sign up from the web page that you can see also on this screen. It will be available in the handout that is being sent to you. If you have any questions, please contact Christina Bellman and Precio Fishbone, um, uh, who can uh, help you to take this to the next step. Thank you very much. So we're ready to take some uh, questions. Back to you, Joachim. Thank you, Magnus. Thanks for a very interesting and informative presentation. Uh, and now you have the opportunity to ask your questions. So you can do that by writing your questions in the webinar tool, uh, where it says questions. And we will uh, uh, answer all your questions orally. So please write your questions now. Uh, okay, so we have one question here. Uh, there are a lot uh, of resources put in technology technical development as IoT, robotics, AI, and so on, managed by a CIO. Do you see that as a conflict to innovation, that it's more customer-driven uh, and or more sustainable, that it's driven from, uh, let's see here. Let, oh. That it's driven really from an a innovation leader perspective. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much. I think it's a it's a very good question, and and, and naturally there is a lot of uh, a lot of attention going on in IoT, robotics, uh, AI, and so on at the moment. Uh, and and of course it's very important to experiment with those technologies, try different routes, and so on. 
for example, being uh, technology driven when you, when you, when you do so. Uh, the risk we are running is that uh, we focus only on that and it's not really clear what, what, what problem are we trying to solve? Where do we want to take our customer next? So uh, really the, the recommendation here and what comes out of my presentation is to, uh, uh, in parallel of looking at new technologies and what they can do, we should also focus um, uh, very clearly on our customers and the users what are they expecting? What are the problems that they are facing? Because when we deploy these technologies, we should do that uh, uh, to issues and challenges that are the most important to our customers. That is the only way that we're going to, to leverage the investments that we're doing in those technologies. Otherwise, we're running the risk that we, we're, we're, we're investing a lot in technology um, we are applying it in areas where it might be nice to have, but it's not really uh, a deep need and we will not find over time the willingness to pay for those, for, for those services. So we really need to work from two directions here. And typically we forget about what are the, the deep needs, desires of our customers and users and how can we address them with all these new technologies that, that you mentioned in, in this question. So I, I hope that that, that uh, reflects a little bit on, on, on that question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, another question here is, uh, uh, what is the difference between improvements and innovations? And is it important? Well, uh, uh, I think it's important to, uh, to have a very broad view on innovation. Uh, uh, some of you might think of innovation, okay, that's, that's just the radical stuff, it's just the robotics and so on, but um, it's important to, to kind of look at innovation in a very broad way. Uh, so also small steps, incremental innovation are really important to keep, keep in mind. And <clears throat> for some organizations, um, um, it's the right thing to do, to work with improvements and incremental innovations for the time being. Another time, they should be more radical. They should they, they should move and, 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 and kind of take on take on bigger challenges. And and you really need in your strategy to think about where are you going to be along that, that full spectrum. And it doesn't really matter what you call it, as long as it contributes value to your organization, to your customers and users. But it is important when you distinguish the way you work. We talked about the different processes and approaches needed when you're addressing improvements versus more radical uh, innovations. Okay, thank you. Another question here is, uh, when will the international standard ISO 50501 be published and where can I learn more about this? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a work that is going on right now. Uh, and uh, in about a year's time, uh, this framework will be, will be ready. Um, now this is called the standard, but uh, um, don't really don't think of it of a standard. It's really a checklist. What you need to think about in your organization to drive innovation effectively. The six success factors that we have talked about today is a summary of what is in that guidance standard. And in a year's time, you, it will be possible to um, uh, uh, to see that published. But we are already now preparing ourselves and our organizations for, for uh, using the, uh, the, the insights, the knowledge and the experience in, uh, uh, in, that, in that guided standard. It's the Swedish Standard Institutes that is developing this. I can, I can uh, definitely help um, uh, connecting you to that work if you are interested in participating and get a preview of what is happening in that space. Okay, thank you. Another question is uh, how to drive innovation in public sector without profit or competition as a natural uh, driver. How to refine and values could be soft and disconnected from economy. I think that's a very good question. And uh, what we're trying to do when we're engaging in this work is to be um, <clears throat> kind of um, neutral to the fact that we have uh, a for-profit organization where we also have public organizations working with this. We talk about value here, but uh, it's not necessarily economic value. Uh, this could be uh, uh, value to, uh, to, to citizens, social value, 
uh, uh, things like uh, uh, the trust, uh, the, the experience when using the service, uh, and so on. And it really boils down to your metrics, how you measure performance, one of these success factors. So in the public sector, you have to work with different measurements, different metrics, and different way of assessing, uh, assessing uh, the value. However, all these factors are, are, are relevant also for innovation that is happening in the, in, in the public sector. You need to think strategically. What value do you, do you, do you need or want to create for, for your citizens or your users? Uh, how are you going to use it? How are you going to measure value? How are you going to collaborate and innovate together with your users? Uh, and, and, and so on. So at the center of this, the way you approach innovation from intent all the way to value is the same, uh, regardless of the type of organization you have. Uh, even though the requirements and so on on how you can uh, experiment and so on might be limited or restricted uh, in certain sectors compared to others. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question uh, has come up here. Who, who do you think should be responsible for innovation in the organization? Well, that is, um, uh, that, 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 that is a, uh, an interesting question because typically we do not have a person at the highest level in the organization responsible for innovation. Um, so even if we say that innovation is extremely important for us in our organization, uh, then kind of, uh, when we think of it a little bit more, who, who is going to carry that responsibility? Sometimes we might think of uh, a person working with R&D, the technology officer or something like that. Um, uh, but it's equally important to think about innovation, as we have been talking about here today, in marketing, in, in HR, for example, to find the great innovators. So it's actually everybody's responsibility to work with innovation. Uh, at the top level or to be responsible for innovation at the top level. But we also know that everybody's responsibility is, is no, no one's responsibilities. And I think that is a particular challenge that we need to address in our organization. And there's also a reason why we see such a big dissatisfaction. Even if we want innovation and even if we try, we don't get it because it becomes no one's responsibility. So we need to have people in our organizations that are dedicated innovation management professionals that, that can kind of uh, be the hub for innovation related issues and, and reach out to R&D if you have it, to marketing, to HR, finance, and so on. Thank you. Thank you, Magnus, for a very interesting presentation. And thank you, everyone, for attending. We hope that you found this uh, webinar uh, interesting.